Rob Lewis, Tennessee basketball, sweet 16 bound for the 10th time in program history. The second time ever it's been back-to-back -back years of the Sweet 16 for Tennessee. And uh, it wasn't pretty, but it doesn't matter. Survive in advance, and Tennessee's moving on to play Creighton in the nightcap on Friday. Yeah, the nightcap, for, for sure. Uh, everybody, get, get your Red Bulls handy. But, uh, man, you know, Eric, you said it best. I mean, I, I, I am sure the general's quarters was a mess in, in the second half on a, <laughs> during, from Saturday night, but – it doesn't matter. I mean, there, there's 16 plus 16 teams playing college basketball right now. We're playing, you know, whose seasons are, are still alive and Tennessee's one of them. And it doesn't matter how you got there or what it looked like. All that matters is that, you know, Tennessee's still practicing today. They're going to get on an airplane, you know, Wednesday, fly to Detroit. And as you said, only the second time in the history of this program that, that it's happened in, in back to back years. And that I mean, that's significant. Rob, when you look at this this team, and what do you – are we at the point where you just don't make anything out of anything, right? It's just on to the next one. Is that kind of the the bottom line deal, or, or are you looking for – you know, are you looking for specific trends or things coming out of a game, or do you think, hey, you won that weekend, now you go try to win the next weekend, and they're completely separate of each other? Man, that, that's how I think, Brent. And, I, and I'm not saying that there's no carryover that you don't want to get hot and, and get some momentum, but I really don't. And, and you know, Brent, you, me, me and you've done this together. I mean, it really does, you know, change gears. I mean, when you go from Columbus, Ohio to San Antonio, I mean, it's a different, I mean, it's a different tournament. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that you don't, you know, maybe keep, if, if you're in a groove that some of that doesn't stay, stay in, but it really Every weekend is a, it, you know, coaches look at it the same way. It's a different tournament. Um, and so, you know, I, I and Coach Barnes, and, and I think a lot of coaches use the same euphemism. He was just like, you know, our goal is to win the Charlotte Invitational. Now we want to go win, you know, a four team tournament in Detroit. And I, I really think that each, you know, little pause, it's, it's its own, you know, self contained drama. And, you know, Tennessee did what they had to do. They got through Charlotte. And now it's a, you know, it's a whole new storyline. Rob, don't you think that this uh, this next one's the hardest one? I mean, only one Tennessee basketball team has made in the lead eight. You know, uh, you know. So I mean, like, I, you're you're getting into rarefied air if you can win this next one, right? Uh, amongst you know the teams in Tennessee basketball history, um, it just feels like this next one is the biggest hurdle to climb, more so than the elite eight trying to get to a final four for the first time in school history, because you've not you've only been to one elite eight. Yeah, but I mean, for these guys, though, I don't, I don't think these, I don't think they think like that. I mean, I, I don't think Dalton Connect is like, man, Tennessee's only been to one Elite Eight. I mean, I think he's thinking, I want to go to the Elite Eight. You know, I, I just, I, I don't, I don't think they, those kids carry that baggage. You know, maybe for you know the coaches or administrators, but I just think at this level, every every one of them's hard. I mean, it's going to be a hard matchup with Creighton. Um, you know, kind of a clash in styles, or at least, you know, b before having gotten knee deep into the matchup, it, it looks like it's going to be a clash of styles with a team that really likes to shoot, you know, the, the three ball. So, I, you know, I, I'm just not sure, AP, how much the middle stuff weighs on these kids. I mean, I, I you know, for the fan base, I mean, they carry it around for sure, like a thousand pound gorilla on their back. But, you know, again, I, I don't know the Zakai Zeeler, you know, Friday afternoon is thinking, man, Tennessee's only been to one elite eight. I just, I don't know that they, they process the stuff like that, but I think there's pressure. Don't get me wrong for sure. But I don't think they're, they're feeling the pressure because you know, of what Tennessee's program has done. I think it's all, you know, coming from within because they want to get the elite eight. They want to get to the final four. You know, right. Rob, I mentioned that it wasn't pretty. It doesn't matter. You just move on. And that's still true. But you know, parts of Tennessee's game was pretty. That defense, which Rick Barnes prides himself on, every team here at Tennessee's played good defense, and you know it's a top three defense all year long, pretty much. Um, it it did play well. It held Texas at thirty six percent. It won the rebounding battle, forced more turnovers, um, you know, points off turnovers, and you know, resulted in you know scoring more points in the paint and so on and so forth. But can Tennessee beat Creighton, shooting thirty four percent and and twelve percent? I mean, I think. More so than anything, you cannot afford to shoot twelve percent from beyond the arc again, right? No, I don't think there's any question. And <laughs> and and Hubbard, I mean, I was I was banging my head about it or making noise about it, but Hubbard actually went and found this stat, and I, we we don't know for sure if it's true, but Hubbard, Hubbard dug it up on Twitter on, on some deep dive that, and I don't know, we we can't vouch for the research, but I love the stat so much, I'm going to throw it out there. Hubbard, what was it that there had been sixty? 
six games before Saturday night where a team shot less than 34, 35% overall and less than 15% from the floor in the NCAA tournament. And those teams were 0 and 66. And now they're 1 and 66. So my point, I know Tennessee can't shoot that good again, shoot that way again and, and win a game. It's only happened once in, in the history of the tournament. And, and I don't think they will. I mean, just, you know, st- from statistically speaking, I mean, I think that's an outlier. I mean, if you shot, if you just shot three for 25 from three, I, I think the chances of you performing that badly again the next time out are, are you know, are pretty astronomical. And we'll see. But I, no, short answer no, you can't shoot like that and win. And, and no, I wouldn't expect him to shoot like that again. So, this is from Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee became the second team ever to win an NCAA tournament game while shooting under 34% from the floor and under 12.5% from three point range. So that percentage w- went from 15 to 12.5, but only the, the second team ever. So regardless, I mean, it's, it is rare air. We're talking and, historical. Uh, yeah. Historical. And, and, and brand of Tennessee wants to, um, you know, beat Creighton on, on, on Friday night, obviously you got to shoot a little bit better, but you need to continue to play defense and, and do a lot of what you did in this game, because again, it was good enough to win a game in the second round. And it's, it's been good enough to win a whole lot of games for a whole lot of years for Rick Barnes. Well, I mean, you got to score points, and, and every game takes on its own different life. But your defense has to travel, and you know Tennessee couldn't score points against Mississippi State in the SEC tournament, and their defense faltered as a result of it. I think the most impressive thing, as as ugly as the game might have been on Saturday, is, is Rob. Their defense did not did not slack off when the offense was just non-existent. Um, the way it was really in the first half in particular for Tennessee. They never let their offensive struggles affect their defensive intensity on the other end, which was a mature thing because, I, I I mean, it did affect them at Texas A&M in the SEC tournament. Now, I'm not sure their focus was where it was supposed to be in the SEC tournament versus the NCAA, but it says something about the fact they can play at that level on defense when their offense was struggling the way it is. You can't play like that through the whole tournament, but sometimes you got to just, you got to win one ugly, right? Where, where things don't go well, you got to hang your hat on something. And Tennessee was able to hang their hat on their defense. Yeah, I mean, it's, it sounds cliche. I mean, we talk about it on here. I mean, Coach Barnes talks about it, but man, it, that's really true. It, it is hard to keep playing defense when it's I mean, when you just can't buy a bucket. I mean, the offense is fun. I mean, you know, and when you're a kid and you fall in love with basketball, chances are you fell in love with it because offense is fun. It's fun to make shots. You know, it's it's you know it's fun to get out and run. I mean, defense is is not fun when, when you're a kid and, and you find out later on, you know, if you like to win, defense is pretty important. And it's it takes a lot of mental toughness and and character to keep playing that hard on that end of the floor when it's such a struggle offensively. And, and, and I just I just think, you know, people really need to appreciate, you know, what Tennessee did and being able to win that game when they were just so bad offensively. And that's really the first thing Coach Barnes talked about you know, post game. I and mean, the first thing out of his mouth is the opening statement. He was like, man, you know, and he's been around. He's like, you know, this is one of those, you shoot it like that in this tournament, you, you know, usually you get sent home and that's, you know, tip of the cat to my, my kids for, you know, making sure that didn't happen tonight. You know, Rick, Rick knew it better than any of us that yeah, you make three, three pointers out of 25 <laughs> in the second round. You're, you're probably not, not going on. And, and, and they did. And, and I, I, I think everybody, you know, in that locker room probably felt like they dodged one, and they dodged one because of their defense. But a reason you have confidence also moving forward is because you have Dalton Connect, because you have a guy like Zakai Zio that can change a whole lot of things up. I mean, this is a different team that is going on to the Sweet 16 than it was a season ago, whereas you didn't have that true number one, got to get a bucket, he's going to go and find it. Obviously a player that's played at a National Player of the Year type you know, caliber all season long, but – you're also healthy, and, and you know, despite the poor shooting performance, you should still have a whole lot of confidence that Tennessee can find the bottom of the net, you know, on, on a, more than just an occasion uh, moving on in the tournament. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that that are led by two guys that I think have basically a short memory. Like, you know, okay, we didn't shoot it great. It's one game, flush it. New new venue, new sight lines, um, new week, um, new opponent. And so I don't think that they'll be phased by any of this. I still think that, you know, you know, you, you need, you know, you love the, the trio, right? Adu, Ziegler, and, and Connect. You still need somebody. Is it Joe? I mean, he had a huge clutch corner three the other night when he hadn't really done anything the whole game. Is it Santi? Is it Jordan Ganey? Is it Shack? Who is it that kind of 
you know, you know, is it a Waka? You know, I mean, he played really well, you know, the other night in his limited minutes when he wasn't in foul trouble. So, um, you know, I, I just feel like this next game, you know, I think it's a good matchup for Tennessee. Um, you know, if, if Creighton just doesn't just shoot the lights out and, and Tennessee's able to uh, to rotate defensively and and, and be in position. Hey, Rob, yeah, I, I, go ahead, Rob. I was Sorry. just going to say one thing. AP, you touched on Adu and, and kind of what's become Tennessee's big threes as he's worn on. And, and it, everybody knows I'm a huge Jonas Adu fan and give him tons of credit for, you know, Tennessee being where they are because of his development. But, man, he can't miss the bunnies. He cannot – I agree. He cannot, he cannot miss the butt. I mean, that, when he in a game like Tennessee was in the other night, and like they're going to be in if they survive, I mean, two or three possessions here that you can't miss the bunnies. And golly, man, he missed at least two, at least two, maybe that that were not. I would say not very high degree of difficulty for a seven footer. And I mean, that's you, that's going to cost them. I just wonder. I mean, you know, a year ago it was you know played lights out against Duke in the in the second round, and then. In the Sweet 16 against FAU, you you couldn't hit the broadside of the barn. I just wonder if it flips this year. If you got lucky because Texas couldn't hit the broadside of the barn either, and then you end up playing really well um, against Creighton. I, I, I just don't expect them to play the same. I expect them to bounce back. Do they win? I don't know because um, Creighton can shoot it. But I don't expect Tennessee to put up the same performance offensively they did uh, against Creighton. Rob, Rob, uh, yeah, Creighton, yeah. Rob, let, let me ask you this. I mean, Tennessee's got like 9 million people on the bench scouting and putting things together, but Kim English has played Creighton twice. Beat them twice. And they've beaten them twice. Is that a thing, or is it Tennessee's, their, their own team? I mean, I know Rick Barnes and, and Kim English are good friends. Kim English came to Knoxville, watched Tennessee play this year. Is that an aid to Tennessee, or is that an overblown storyline that some people will put out there because Tennessee's got every resource under the world in the world to prepare for Creighton. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't make a huge deal out of it, but I, I think it'll be a nice little, you know, feather. I mean, certainly, I mean, as you say, they have a million, you know, people that, you know, that, that can put in man hours breaking down video and whatever, but I don't, you know, it's still, I, I think be able to pick up the phone while you're watching that video and, you know, calling Kim and saying, Hey, you know, what, how did you guys you know, defend this? Or what did you do with this? I mean, I, I, it may be a little thing, but it might be something that, that steals you possession, you know, in, in a game. And in the Sweet 16, that could be, you know, that might mean something. I'm just, I, again, I, I don't want to say it's like one of the biggest keys of the game, but I bet you Rick Barnes is glad Kim English played him twice this year. That's it's a resource. It's got to be a help. I mean, how big of a help it is. I mean, obviously, it's a guy that you that you call. Creighton's an interesting team. They don't have much of a bench, Rob. They, they don't play deep, but they don't foul. I mean, like, they play without fouling, uh, which seems kind of crazy to, to me. That I mean, can you attack them and, and, and really get to the rim against them, or is there enough rim protection without fouling? I, oh. I think that's an important or an intriguing part of this matchup. Well, the big kid, his name escapes me. I mean, he's not the most athletic guy, but man, he's a, he's pretty solid, you know, rib to, rim protector. Um, you know, he's uh, you know, I, I think Jonas matches up pretty well with him. But um, you know, I think the point you make about them fouling Hubbard is, is a pretty good one. And and then they they're pretty solid defensively, but they um, you know, they're not UConn or anything. But I, I was looking kind of just you know getting ready to do the deep dive last night. I think they give up like sixty six points a game, um, in on the year. And that's not a result of, you know, pace of play. Cause they want to get up, you know, they want to get up and down. I mean, they're, it's, you know, pretty hot, you know, they're not loyal to Marymount, but I mean, it's a pretty high possession game. They're not holding opponents under 70 because, you know, they're, they're playing half a half court style. So that's one thing that I don't think Tennessee will have to worry about. And I, I think ten, we, we can all agree. Tennessee has been better when they haven't gotten in one of these bogged down half point, half court games, like, you know, Vanderbilt did to them. Texas a and did to him. South Carolina did to him when they beat him in Knoxville. So I, I think that plays the Tennessee advantage. But man, they're going to have to guard the perimeter. Creighton, uh, it's, Creighton shot almost a thousand three pointers th this year. I mean, just I mean they are they are not afraid. They led the Big East in makes. They make almost almost a dozen a game. So it, to your Eric's earlier point, yeah, they're, Tennessee better make more than three three threes in this game, and they're going to be at a a big disadvantage. My key to this game is yeah, Creighton's going to shoot to three, Rob, but Tennessee's got to do a really good job 
of keeping them off the offensive boards, giving them extended possessions, giving them second and third looks. You know, you go back to early in the year, some of those teams that gave Tennessee fits were the hungrier team on the glass, especially on the offensive glass. So uh, that to me is a, is a big key in this game is not because when you miss threes, that the ball is going to normally bounce pretty wide. You've got to be able to go get it and be aggressive. Rob, you went into it a moment, you know, ago right there, just talking about the three pointers and the efficiency and all that, the, the volume that they've shot. Um, Tennessee was a uh, Tennessee was a popular Final Four pick when people were filling out the brackets, obviously. But a lot of times, in Tennessee, they didn't have Tennessee going deep. They had Tennessee losing this game to Creighton. Any other reason why Creighton would be a pick here over Tennessee uh, in this basketball game for for the average fan? I think for the average fan, I mean, this don't sugarcoat it. I mean, they look at Tennessee and specifically Rick Barnes's success in, in, in March, and yeah, and they, they have questions. You know, we'll see. I mean, I think this team is is built to to do this. I mean, I think they're built to win this game and and to play, you know, uh, for for a chance to go to the Final Four. I mean, I don't I don't think it's going to be a personnel issue. I mean, I think why I, I, I had it. I Jemai Bashak had a great quote about it, and I used it. Somebody may have read it. Um, Saturday night, and I was asking him in the locker room afterwards, like, man, this does this feel different this year? I mean, you were in the exact same spot a year ago. Except you, we were in Orlando, you just beaten Duke, you were going to the Sweet 16, you know, and the, but does this feel different? Jamal was like, yeah, man, I mean, this feels a lot different. I mean, and he looked over, he's like, you know, we got Zakai's healthy, we got Dalton Connect, you know, sitting over there. He's like, this, you know, we feel like we're hitting on all cylinders right now. And, you know, and he didn't come out and say it, but last year, I mean, it was a grind. I mean, getting to the Sweet 16 was a grind. Once once Zakai went down, I mean, everything was hard once Zakai went down. And it's, you know, this team's just built different. And it's, yeah. it's. I mean, it, getting to the Sweet 16 for this team was the expectation. And it, maybe even, you know, to win one more is the expectation. Whereas last year, it didn't feel that way. Like, beating Duke was like, whew, you know, big sigh. Yeah. Big, you know, know, we just accomplished. It doesn't feel like they've accomplished anything huge right now to me and maybe i don't mean i don't mean that as a negative or be critical to me what they've done right now is what they should have what they're capable of doing yeah and what's funny about this time of year is perceptions just become such a reality right so the, everybody forgets really tennessee was it was a heck of an achievement to get to the sweet 16 but because they were playing a nine seed yeah. it was a choke that they didn't get to the elite eight much the way this year a lot of people have Creighton winning this game because Tennessee was a bad defensive team because of what Kentucky did in, in Knoxville in the regular season finale and what Texas A&M did to Tennessee. Suddenly, Tennessee was a bad defensive team because of those last two games, when in reality they've been a good defensive team all year long. It, it's just funny to me how perception takes on its own life, right, Rob? I mean, McNeese was a popular pick, and then you go look at who they played, and you're like, why would anybody have picked them to win that game, right? I mean, like, there was nothing about their schedule that said they could play and advance in this tournament, yet some people were talking about them on the selection shows about, you know, that's a sleeper sweet 16 pick and, and all this other stuff. It, it's just funny how perception takes on a life of its own when you do this many hours of coverage and this much talking about the NCAA tournament. Yeah, I, I don't, don't disagree at all. And I thought you know, I, I made a starky tweet about it. Maybe some people, you know, actually saw it happen. But, yeah. but I thought a great example of what you're talking about is after you know Saturday night, late night. And I'm I'm, I'm up late. I'm still writing, and you know, CBS or TBS or whoever's doing it. But it's Seth Davis and is talking about Tennessee, and he's talking about playing Creighton, and, he's, and Seth is harping on, man, you know, Tennessee just you know they shot this, they shot that, you know, blah blah. They're gonna boy, they're going to have to do a lot better than that, or they've got no shot against Creighton. Meanwhile, five minutes earlier, Creighton had just been taken to overtime by the 11 seed, you know, in, in, in their region. And, we're, and if, if, if Oregon could have, could have made a front end of a one-and-one, one, Creighton would have lost. And meanwhile, you flip to Jay Wright, and they ask him the same thing about Tennessee, and, and the guy who's won two national titles and, you know, been to however many Final Fours is like, man, haven't been there. When you shoot it like that in this tournament and you still get out of there with a win, I can't tell you what that does for your confidence. Watch out for Tennessee. I mean, just two totally you – know, couldn't, <laughs> right. couldn't, couldn't be more different. Yep. And, you know, and the one guy, you know, went to Duke and his dad was Bill Clinton's lawyer and the other guy, you know, has 800, <laughs> 800 victories. 
Yeah. Well, so. and I mean, again, it's because there's so much talking about it, it the perception just kind of takes on a life of its own, um, which is kind of crazy. My last thing to you, Rob, before um, I get out of uh, out of some of the basketball talk is, are you, su- I, I guess you're not surprised, but I mean, you, we talk about each tournament, each pod, each weekend being different. Th- this whole tournament's different. I mean, it's been battle ball, like just beat everybody up, just kind of totally let them go play, right? I mean, it's, it's such a different style of game in the NCAA tournament than it is in the regular season in any league anywhere when, when you watch games or it feels that way to me. Is that, is that right or not? I, I mean, I probably didn't get to, I probably didn't watch as much as you did of, of everything, Hubbard, at least on, on, on game day. But I, from the small sample size that I have seen, or not small sample size, but what I have seen, you know, outside of this Tennessee, I wouldn't disagree with that. I mean, I think it looks physical and I don't think you see a lot of coaches complaining about it. You know, personally, I mean, I, I don't know that I go so far as to say that they're swallowing their whistles, but I mean, Tennessee and Texas, well, I mean, those are two physical basketball teams. I mean, they got big dudes, they got, you know, big guys inside. And I mean, I don't think you either, you know, Tope was in foul trouble, but I think he came back pretty honestly from, from where I was sitting as he, as he often does. And, 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 you know, I, I don't think either coach had a, had a big problem with the way that game was, was official, was officiated. 